Magic Tree House, Book Number Thirty Four, A Merlin Mission, Season of the Sandstorms, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter One: The Golden Age. Jack put his math homework aside. He opened a drawer beside his head bed and pulled out a small handmade book. For the hundredth time, he stared at the title of, on the cover: Ten Magic Rhymes for Annie and Jack. From Teddy and Kathleen, for weeks, Jack had kept the book hidden in his drawer, wondering when he and Danny would be able to use its magic again. The book's ten rhymes were to be used on four missions, and each rhyme could be used only once. Jack and Annie had already used two rhymes on the mission in Venice, Italy. Jack. Annie rushed into Jack's room. Her eyes were shining. Bring the book. Let's go. Where? Said Jack. You know where. Come on. Annie called as she ran back downstairs. Jack quickly put Teddy's and Kathleen's book into his backpack. He pulled on his jacket and took off the stairs. Annie was waiting on the front porch. Hurry! She cried. Wait. How do you know it's there? Jack said, "Because I just saw it," Annie shouted. She hurried down the porch step and crossed the yard. "You saw it? Actually saw it?" yelled Jack as he followed Annie through the chilly afternoon air. "Yes, yes," Annie yelled. "When?" shouted Jack. "Just now," said Annie. "I was walking home from the library and I had this feeling, so I went and looked. It's waiting for us." Jack and Danny raced into the Frog Creek woods. They ran between the budding trees, over the fresh green moss of early spring, until they came to the tallest oak. See," said Annie. "Yes," breathed Jack. He stared up <coughs> at the magic tree house. Its rope ladder dangled above the mossy ground. Jack and Annie started climbing up. Jack followed. When they got inside. Jack pulled off his backpack. Look, the backpack and the ladder, Annie said. She picked up the folded ladder from the floor, and Jack picked up the book with the golden gold cover. But that, but that, Jack said. He showed the book to Annie. The title was "The Golden Age of Bata, Bata." A golden age," said Annie. "That sounds cool. Let's go." Wait, we should write our ra- letter first," said Jack. "Right," said Annie. She unfolded the paper. Merlin's handwriting," she said. She read aloud. "Dear Jack and Annie of Rock Creek, your mission is to journey a path that of long age and of long ago and help the." Health spread wisdom to the world. To succeed, you must be humble. To use your magic right wisely. Follow this. Wait, what's the kelpa? Said Jack. And what's and what Merlin means? Spread wise wisdom to the world. That's the big responsibility. I don't know. Said Annie. Let me finish. She kept reading. Follow these instructions. Ride the ship of the desert on the cold, starry night. Ride through the dust and the hot morning light. Find the horse on the dome, the one who sees a in the heart of the city, behind the third wall, beneath birds who sing in the room of the tree. Greet the friends you once knew, and the new friend to be. Remember that life is full of surprises. Return to the tree house before the moon rises. Um, this sounds pretty easy," said Annie. "No, it doesn't," said Jack. And all these instructions are so magic, mysterious. We don't know what any of them mean. We'll find out when we get there," said Annie. "But first, we have to get there. Make the wish." Okay," said Jack. He pointed to the cover of the book. 
I wish we could go to the golden age of Baghdad," he said. The wind started to blow. The tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster, and everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter two. Nowhere. Jack felt hard. He opened his eyes. Burning sunlight was floating into the tree house. He and Danny were wearing long robes tied with cords. They were white head clothes and pointed slip on shoes. Jack's backpack had turned into the leather shoulder bag. We look like character in the book and Mary gave us," said Annie. "Tales of the Abraham Knights, yeah, like Elden and Ali Baba," said Jack, shading their eyes from the bright sunlight. Jack and Danny squinted out the window. They had landed in the spiky crown of the palm tree. It was the tallest tree in the clump of palm trees. Thorny shrubs and sorrel green grass grow under the trees. A small spring bubbled up from the ground. Surrounding the clump of trees were miles and miles of scorching sand. This doesn't look like a golden age to me," said Annie. Yeah, and where's Baghdad? Asked Jack. He picked up the research book and opened it to the first page. He read aloud, "From from seven thousand sixty-two A.D. to twelve fifty-four A.D., the Arab world had a golden age. During that time." The ruler known as the Caliph, Caliph, governed an empire that stretched for thousands of miles. The capital of the Arabs in empire, empire, empire was the city of Baghdad, an important center for learning and trade. Jack looked up. So, Caliph. Is a ruler," he said, "and he probably lives in Baghdad. Yeah, but how do we get there?" asked Annie. "Patience," said Jack. "Remember, on our last mission, we learned that we have to do things order, one thing at a time." He read the first part of the Merlin's instructions: "Ride a ship of the desert on the cold, starry night. Ride through the dust and hot morning light." I wonder what the ship of the desert is," said Jack, looking up. "Well, whatever it is, I'm sure we'll find it, it eventually," Jack Annie said so slowly, as if she was trying to sound patient. "We could just sit here and keep an eye out for the big boat, or, or what?" said Jack. "Maybe we could use one of Teddy and Kathleen's magic rhymes." Not yet," said Jack. "Merlin says to use our magic wisely. We just got here. We used two rhymes on our on our last mission, and and we only have eight left to divide between three. Okay, okay," Annie broke in. "We can only use the rhyme when there's absolutely nothing else to do, right?" "Right," said Jack. "So," said Annie. What do you think we should do? We start. We could start walking," said Jack. "Walk where?" said Danny. "Which way is Baghdad?" Jack looked out the window. Beyond the palm trees, where nothing was nothing but sand and sky. In the distance, there were lonely dunes. The desert was eerily silent. We could uh. Jack couldn't think of anything else they could do. We could look into Ryan's book, he said. He pulled the Jack pulled the book of magic rhymes out of his pack. He and Danny read down the table of contents together. Make a stone come alive, read Jack. Read Danny. We did that on our last mission. We can't do that again. Look, it wouldn't help anyway. Said Jack. He looked at other rhymes. Make metal stop. He read. We already done that too. Turn into dogs. Jack. 
read Annie. She looked at Jack. No, he said. Mend what cannot be mended, read Annie. Nothing, nothing needs mending, said Jack. How about this one, said Annie. Make helpers appeared out of nowhere. Well, said Jack, maybe. Come on, it's perfect, said Annie. We, uh, that's where we are, nowhere, and we could share, sure use some helper. Okay, said Jack. I'll write a line Teddy wrote. You read Kathleen's line in her silky language. Okay, said Annie. She turned to the page with a rhyme. She held the book out to Jack. Jack read a loud, clear voice. From be from far beyond, send helpers here. And then Annie read, "Hi, bye, hi, care." The second that Annie finished the rhyme, wind gusted in from the desert, blowing the cloud of sand through the window. The wind shook the palm trees. Sand blowed into Annie's eyes. "Ow!" she said. Get back! cried Jack. Jack and Danny jumped away from the window. They pressed themselves against the wall and covered their face. Grady sand kept blowing into the treehouse. It's the sandstorm, said Jack. The hot sand piled into drift all over the floor. Then the wind died as quickly as it had started. The palm trees stopped shaking. Jack and Danny. Look out the window. The air was thick with grainy dust, green dust, making it hard to see. But the sand was still. I think it's over," said Annie. "I hope so," said Jack. "Why did our magic wand cause the sandstorm instead of sending us helpers?" "I don't know," said Annie. "Maybe we said it wrong." Jack brushed the sand off the research book and looked up sandstorm in the index. He found the right page and read: "The season of the sandstorm began in the desert of mid-February and continues all spring. Winds can blow as fast as forty miles per hour. Sandstorms can easily cause travelers to lose their, their way in the desert." "I don't understand," said Jack. "We don't need to lo- lose our way. We need to find our way." Just then, the sound of bell came from outside. Jack and Danny looked out the window. Through the hedge, they saw four riders perched high on the hump of camels. The riders were brightly were brightly colored robes. Behind them, the the a dozen more camels were tied high, head to tail, and loaded down with saddlebags. As the camels swung from side to side, bell twinkled from around their necks. Annie grinned. "Helpers," she said. Chapter three, memory. Annie stuck her head out the treehouse window. "Hey," she called. "Shh," said Jack. Jack pulled her back in. "Don't let them see us up here. It's too hard to explain the treehouse. Let's go down." Good point," said Annie. She handed Merlin's ladder and to Jack and started down the rope ladder. Jack grabbed his shoulder bag. He put the ladder inside, then la- added the research book and rhyme book. He slung the ladder back across his chest and climbed down. When he stopped, he stepped onto the ground. Annie t- Jack places the rope ladder behind the trunk. Tree trunk, so it wouldn't be noticed. Okay, he said to Annie. Hey, Annie called again, waving. She and Jack step out of the open. Step out into the open. The camel, the camel rider, headed toward the palm trees. The man in the lead made a camel kneel. As he climbed off, Jack and Annie ran over to him. The the man wore a Long white robe. He had a black beard and stern dark eyes. Who are you? He asked, unsmiling. For from where do you come? I'm from Annie, and this is my brother Jack. 
Woods, said Annie. Our home is far away in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. I have not heard of such a place, said Jack. Said uh, the man said, How do you come to be here in the desert alone? Uh, Jack didn't know, know what to say. We were riding with our family, and he said, We stopped to rest here. My brother and I took a nap behind these trees. When we woke up, everyone was gone. They left us by mistake. See, we have a really big family. They were, they are many brothers and sisters. Annie, said Jack. She was saying too much, he thought. The man looked concerned. Why have they not come back for you? He said, gazing out, gazing out at the desert. I hope they have not been attacked by bandits. Are the bandits around here? asked Annie. There were, they are many bandits prowling the desert, said man. Said the man. Jack looked anxiously around at the vast stand be playing. That is why one must always travel with the others, said the man. But I hope your family is safe and will return for you soon. Excuse me, Annie said politely, but who are you? How did you happen to come here? I am the merchant, the man said. My caravan was traveled from the west when we were surprised by the sudden sandstorm. It seems to come from nowhere, but luckily it brought us to this oasis. We will rest and water our animals until sun goes down. In the cool of the night, we will travel on to the Baghdad. The caravan ladder walked over to his men as, and spoke to them. The, this mountain and the started taking sandal bags of the camels. Annie turned to Jack. See, her rhymes work, she whispered. The sandstorm was magic. It brought them here on their way to Baghdad. But how can we get them to help us? said Jack. Well, Merlin said we should be humble, so let's over offer to help them, said Annie. She walked over to the caravan leader. He was filling the car canvas box with water from the small spring. Excuse me, said Annie. We wondered if we could help you. The man gave her a quick smile. Thank you, yes, he said. If you could get a date, it would be most appreciated. My man's very hungry. He handed Annie a two large baskets. No problem, said Annie. We'll get a date. Annie carried the basket to Jack. Do you know what the date is? She whispered. We're supposed to get her some. I looked up, said Jack, with his back to the camel riders. He pulled the research book out of his back and pulled, looked up dates. He read, dates are no, are known as the fruit of the desert. They hang in a bunch of dates palms. People gather dates by shaking the trunk of the trees. Not only are dates an important food, but the wood and leaves of the date palms are used to make... Okay, got it, interrupted Annie. Putting the baskets down, let's start shaking the trees. Jack put the book away and looked around. For the first time, time he noticed a bunch of brown fruits hanging from the trees. He grabbed hold of the nearest trunk, tree trunk. Annie grabbed the tr trunk from the other side. Together, they shook the trees until they began falling to the ground. In the desert heat, Jack and Annie went off to, to went off went from tree to tree, shaking each one and gathering the dates that fell to the ground. By the time they had filled their basket, the trees were casting a long shadow over the oasis. Tired and shaddy, Jack and Danny carried their heavy baskets back to the caravan leader. He was boiling water over the fire, fire of twigs. Ah, very good, he said. Thank you, Jack and Danny. 
you're welcome, said Annie. What else can we do for you? You should rest from the heat now, said the man. Would you like to sit and have tea with us? Sure, said Annie. By the way, what's your name? My name is very long, the man said with a smile. You may call me Mamoon. Well, the camels gears grazed Mamoon and his man sat on the wood, wooden rug spread over the grass. They shared date and tea with Jack and Danny. The dark plum fruit was very, was sweet and chewy. The tea was strong but good. In the fiercely red glow of setting sun, Jack watched the gazing camels. He thought the humming, hump animal looked very funny. They had knees, knobby knees, big clumsy feet, and little ears that twitched. Some camels smacked their drip, droppy leaves as they drank water. Others gobbled down a whole bunch of shroom bush without chewing. Don't the thrown heart and camel's throat? Jack asked Mamoon. No, said the caravan leader. Their mouths are very tough. They can eat anything. Six bones. Even their ten are even our tents and sandalback if we let them, said the young camel rider. Annie and Jack laughed. What's in your sandalbacks? Annie asked. Our bags is are filled with good from Greece, Turkey and Syria. Sayulia, said Mamun, we have many things, jewels and, and precious piece, such as cinnamon, paper, pepper, and vanilla. We are taking any, everything to Baghdad to sell. We, ha we have to get to Baghdad too, said Annie. We have to meet with the caliph. The camel riders chuckled as they, as if they thought Annie was making a joke. Only Mamoon did not laugh. Your family is to meet with the caliph? He said. No, said Annie. Just Jack and Annie. We have to help him spread wisdom to the world. Annie, warned Jack. The camel riders laughed loudly. What's so funny? Annie asked. The caliph does not meet with we children said the young man he is the most powerful and important person in the world oh said annie frowning the news worried jack too mamoon looked at annie and jack with a curious expression not will soon be upon us since your family had not returned not yet returned would you like to travel with us to baghdad he said you have journey by a camel this far. I trust you can ride camel the rest of the way. Sure we can, said Annie. We love camels. We do, said Jack. I thought Jack. Good. We love our ship of the desert too, said Mamoon. We will set sail on them soon. So that's what ship of the desert are, Annie whispered to Jack. Camels, thought Jack. Oh, brother. Chapter 4 Ship of the Desert The camel riders all silently watched the sun set over the faraway dawns. As a fairy ball slipped beneath the horizon, the desert was flooded with red light. As soon as the sun disappeared, the air grew much cooler. The moon stood up. It's time, it is time to go, he said. The camel riders put out their small fires. In the glowing darkness, Mamoon helped them settle up their animals and load, load them with baggage. Then Mamoon came over to Jack and Danny. You can ride these two sisters, he said, pointing to two camels kneeling in the sand. Climb on, then come to the front of the line to ride with me. Jack and Danny watch over, walk over to the two camel sisters. Each had rings hanging from their neck. Sandals made from colorful cushions were piled high on their hopes. Annie patted the whirly tannin colored fur of one of the camels. The camel looked at Annie with big eyes and fluttered her thick eyelash. Hey, cutie, said Annie. The other camel noses 
nuzzled Annie's neck. Hey, beauty, Annie said to the other. You want some attention too? Cutie and beauty, said Jack. He didn't find either camel, particularly cute or beautiful. Annie climbed on to cat Cutie's saddle cushion to pick up the rain. Let's ride, she said. Cutie rose awkwardly up from the kneeling position to a full stand. Oh, wow, said Annie, towering over Jack. She's really tall. Jack started to climb on to Beauty, but the camel caught an end of his head cloth and began chewing it. Stop that, said Jack, pulling the cloth away from her. Beauty opened her mouth wide and flashed rows of sharp teeth. Jack drew back. Don't be afraid, said Annie. Easy for you to say, said Jack. You're like you. Don't worry, Beauty. Like, don't worry. Beauty likes you too, said Annie. I can tell. Annie's camel began ambling toward the other camels, waiting to head off to the desert. Come on, Jack. It's really fun once you're moving, she called. Fun, Mother Jack. All oh, right. He held on to the end of his head cloth and put his leg over the beauty's hump. The camel eyed him suspiciously. She swooshed her tall tail, slapping his back. Hey, said Jack. Jack tried to get comfortable on the sand cushion, but beauty sapped at him and made a weird screeching sound. Why? said Jack. He hooked his shoulder back onto the sandal horn. When he was finally settled, Beauty turned her head and started chewing chewing on his leather bag. No, don't, yelled Jack. He tried pulling the bag away, but Beauty played talk of war. Come on, let's go, Jack said. Give it back, stupid. Do you really think she is stupid? Jack jumped. A moon had ridden up behind him and was watching as he tried to get his back back from Beauty. Jack was embarrassed. Um, she won't let go. She won't let go of my stuff, he said. The moon grabbed the strap of Jack's back, then clucked her tongue, and the camel let go. She groaned as the moon hooked the leather bag back onto the sandal horns. For thousands of years, camels like this one have carried people across the desert, said Mamoon. She is tr truly magical of nature. Some miracle, thought Jack. She can drink two barrels of water in ten minutes, said Mamoon, and then go for a week without drinking again. She can live many years without food too. Really? said Jack. She is well suited to travel in the desert, said Mamoon. Her thick eyebrows protect her eye from the glare of the sun. Her long eyelash and the fur around her ear keep out a wind-blown sand. Cool, said Jack softly. Her f feet are so tough they do not feel the heat of the desert, said Mamoon, and they are so big that they keep her from sinking down into the loose sand. Hmm, said Jack. She can carry 5,000 pounds of baggage on her back, said Mamoon, and travel 100 miles in a single day. That's a lot, murmured Jack. Mamoon tucked on the camel's rein and clucked his tongue. Beauty breathed heavily at heavily as she rose up on her long, powerful legs and her full height. Mamoon looked at Jack. He must re repack her and ha honor her, he said. In many ways, she is super rare to us, no? Jack nodded. He thought of the word of Merlin's letter. To, su to succeed in your mission, you must be humble. He patted the camel. Good girl, beauty. Mamoon clucked his tongue again and cocked the camel forward. Perched high on the saddle, Jack rocked from side to side. He did not feel at all safe, but he stayed calm. Beauty ambled over to Cutie. The two sisters stood together and snorted. The desert sky was bright with stars. 
and Moon called to his man, and the caravan started moving forward. The camels walked with a swaying motion. They moved two big feet on one side, then two big feet on the other. Jack whipped a horn off the sandal as the sheep of the desert rocked from left to right. Isn't it fun? Isn't this fun? said Annie, rocking all alongside him. Sort of, said Jack, shivering. Actually, he wasn't having any fun at all. He felt seasick and was fro freezing in the night air. Uh, also, he was worried about their mission. Would the ca caliph meet with them? Uh, if, if he did, how could they help him? How he must ride with them to the world, and if Baghdad was very far away, how would they ever find their way back to the treehouse? The moon slowed her camel until he was riding between Jack and Danny. When I was a boy, I spent man many cold nights in the desert riding with my father on a journey to the west, he said. At first, I, I too thought camels were foolish. I always long for more blanket and more for the smooth ride. I wish to be back in Baghdad in my own warm bed. Jack smiled. He liked the cavern later. But over time, I have come to love the cold desert nights, said my moon. Now, when I am sleeping in my warm bed in Baghdad, I long go to be here instead. I wish to be reading the wind at the sea. Stars. How do you read the stars? asked Annie. They have their own language, said Mamoon. At this moment, we were heading east from toward ghost stars. <clears throat> he pointed at the sky. Jack couldn't tell which star was the ghost star, but he was filled with wonder. Thousands of tiny lights twinkled in the black dome of night. They were more stars than Jack had ever imagined. Some looked close enough to touch. The moon started singing the song. The other camel right joined in. Jack couldn't understand the word, but the tune was soothing. The camel seemed to sway to the music. Jack stopped worrying about how they would get back to the treehouse, and he found he was actually enjoying the fresh desert air. He started to relax. Jack, Annie says softly, guess what? We just solved the first mystery in Merle and Slatter. Ride the ship of the desert on the cold, starry night. Yeah, said Jack happily, and it's really fun. Suddenly, the first shout came from the des distance. Jack sat up straighter, his heart thumped. Bandit! One of the camel's dri drivers shouted. Chapter 5 Bandits Jack looked around widely. Dark figures on horses were galloping across the sand toward them. They were yelling and shouting. Oh no! cried Jack. What should we do? We will fight them off, said Mamoon. You and Annie took this back and ride to the dunes. The moon pulled the flat wooden box out of one of his sandbags. He thrust the box into Jack's hands. Hurry, ride as fast as you can. Protect it with your lives. Jack frantically tried to stuff the box into his shoulder bag. But my moon slapped the back of Jack's camel and she bowled it forward. The rain slipped from Jack's hand. He grabbed the sandal horns with one hand and clutched the wooden box to his chest with the other. He held one for his life as Beauty galloped across the dark, dark desert. Annie's camel ran beside Jack's. Like two racehorses, Beauty and Cutie thundered across the sand toward the distant dunes. Rocking crazily from side to side, Jack clung to the box. Slow down, he yelled. Please. It was no use. Beauty ran like the wind. She and her sister frantically flew over the desert under the starry sky. Jack wanted the camel to stop, but at the same time, he wanted to get far away from bandits. 
Finally, the camels began to slow their pace. Jack looked down. Jack looked back. He couldn't see the caravan at all, and no one seems to be follow following them. At the when the two camels reached the dunes, they began plodding around the steep hills. Once they were nearly naked, safely between tall and tall sand drifts, they stopped to rest. Beauty grunted. Cutie snorted. Thanks, thanks, girls," said Annie, patting. I hope Mamoon and the other are safe from the bandits," said Jack. "Me too," said Annie. "What's in the box he gave us?" Jack held up the flat wooden box. "I don't know," he said. "But Mamoon said we should protect it with our lives. Maybe it's precious spe space." "Spaces," said Annie. "I hope it's more than that," said Jack. "I hate to risk my life for cinnamon or pe pepper." Should we look? said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Mamoon might not want us to. But don't you think we could protect it between better if we knew what it was? said Annie. Maybe, said Jack. He could see Annie's point. Okay. Jack tried to open the lid of the box, but he couldn't. In the dark, his finger pressed against the keyhole. Forget it, he said. It's locked. Shh! Listen," said Annie. Jack listened. He heard a high-pitched moaning sound. It sounded like music from the violin. Weaving through the dry sand dune, the howling music grew louder. "What is that?" said Jack. "Uh oh," said Annie. "Now I hear something else." Jack held his breath. He heard hoofs galloping over the desert. "The ba, the bandits," he said. "We have to hide the box." Said Annie. Where? Said Jack. In the sand. Said Annie. She clucked her tongue, and Cutie kept knelt down to the ground. Beauty knelt too. Jack and Annie jumped off their sandal cushions and started digging in the sand. The sound of hoofbeats grew louder and louder. Jack and Annie dug frantically. They throw sand behind them like puppies digging the dirt, digging in the dirt. That's deep enough," said Jack. He placed a box in the hole they had dug. Then he and Annie pushed pile of sand back on top of it. When they stood up, Annie gasped. "Look!" The dark fi figure on the camel was strawberry against the silver sky. The rider was winding his way through the dunes toward them. Jack's heart nearly pounded out of the chest. "Should we use magic rhyme?" Annie shouted. Ask. We don't have time," said Jack. The rider grew, grew closer until they stopped in front of Jack and Danny. "You are safe now," he said. "My moon," said Annie. Relief floated through Jack. He laughed. "Yeah, we're safe," he said. "And you're safe too, my man. Works well," said my moon. The thieves flooded with only the few bags of pepper and painted bits. And we kept your box safe too," said Annie proudly. She knelt down. She knelt and dug in the sand until she uncovered a wooden box. She handed it to Mamoon. "Ah, very good," the caravan leader said. "What's in the box?" said Annie. "The pre precious treasure," said Mamoon. "I have brought it all away from Greece, and I am taking it to Baghdad. Thank you." Both for guarding it with your lives. You are very special. Sure, no problem," said Jack. He still wondered what's in the box: gold, silver, precious jewels. But the moon did not see. Say, he put the box back into his camel's saddle bag. Let us be on our way now," he said. Jack climbed on top of. Top off his kneeling camel, he clucked his tongue. He was surprised and pleased when Beauty rose up on her tall, her tall legs. We will catch up with the, the others in Baghdad," said Mamoon. "If all goes well, we will arrive in the city in the afternoon. We must head east toward the morning sun." Mamoon rode out of the dance. Jack and Danny followed him. 
As their camel rocked their, through the chilly dawn, daylight shimmered over the sand. My moon, last night we heard strange sounds in the dunes, said Annie, like music playing. Ah, yes, said my moon, the whistling sounds. What are the whistling sounds? Said, asked Jack. Some say it is magic, said Mamu, but I believe that all the, all things in nature have their reason. That is why I like the stu- I like the study of science. Science says we must observe our world. We must make experiments to and try to find out why things happen. We have learned the whistling is made by sounds settling in the drift. Oh, said Annie, I hope it was magic. Learning the reason for things is magic, said my moon. True knowledge brings light to the world, and that is a magical thing, no? Yes, said Jack. Annie nodded thoughtfully. I guess when you put it that away, she said, swaying from side to side on the camels, the three riders traveled toward the dawn. As the sun rose higher in the sky, the desert grew blazing hot. Hot. The dry wind whipped through the through the air, making snaky patterns in the sand. The moon held his camel. He looked around and frowned. Around and frowned. What's wrong? said Jack. Are there signs of bandits? Ma moon shook his head. No, it is the desert itself it, that worries me now. He said, "It is rest restless." He clucked his tongue, and his camel began walking away, walking again. As they rode over the restless desert, the wind picked up loose and sand tossed it into the into the air. Jack and Danny lowered their hands to keep the sand from blowing into their eyes. They their had a cloth flap in the wind more and more sand started blowing the desert seemed alive as the sand shipped and swirled the moon stopped again and looked and looked about the snaky patterns the snaky patterns in the sand were blowing into round curly patterns jack heard a weird weird moaning sound is that a whistling sound again he asked hopefully no said my moon that is a cry of the terrible sandstorm, and it will soon be upon us.